What's going on guys? Welcome back to JR Aviation. Welcome to the middle of nowhere, Texas, and welcome to a new airplane reveal. I know we shouldn't be buying another plane right now, but I promise I have a good reason for it. We'll explain in just a second. I got my buddy Jay here. He is the pilot of the day because uh, we're going flying in about 20 minutes in this new bird that's right here in front of us. Jay, are they gonna are they gonna like this one? I think so, yeah, it's an awesome airplane. Got a really good deal, typical JR Aviation fashion. So without further ado, introducing to the channel, our new Cessna 210. Well, there you have it. Bet you didn't see that one coming, but again, I promise I can explain. It's a crazy story that I know you're gonna wanna hear, but I'll explain it maybe up in the air. Uh, let's just say, oh uh, geez, I don't know if I'm gonna title it this or if you, mm -hmm. we bought two of them. We bought two 210s for the price of one. 182. Yeah, long story short, we got an offer we couldn't refuse on our wonderful Cessna 182, and with that money, we bought uh, two. Yeah, that's right, two Cessna 210s. Doesn't make sense, right? But I'll explain. Now, I'm sure you're saying, this isn't a 210, what are you talking about? This is like a, this is a 182, it's got struts, uh, except it has gear doors, so it's a, it's a 182 RG, and uh, you'd be right. Well, kind of. The early year Cessna 210s are a little funky. We have a lot of changes in a short period of time. If you want a great description of all those changes, be sure to hit my link down below. Um, Mark at Skywagons University has a great video on the 210s. I learned so much watching it, but basically 6061 are the 182 RGs, and then the 63 is like a uh, 205 RG, I think uh, he says. For the first four years, IO470, 260 horsepower fuel injection, horizontally opposed, six cylinder, continental, uh, and then in 1964 they went up to six seats. The two seats in the pack are for tiny little kids, but anyway the cabin is way more spacious. It's a lot wider and then it has IO520, 285 horsepower, and then from there they went with like the cantilever wings that were strutless, and then a whole bunch of other changes, but I won't even get into that. Point is this one is known as the 182 RG Cessna 210 if you will. Now for the good stuff. One of the biggest reasons we bought this plane is because of this panel right here. Holy smokes, this has got to be one of the nicest early 210 panels I've ever seen. What about you? Yeah, it, it's really, really nice. I mean, we got both uh, G5s, we have a 430 with WASP, the 355, 345, 345 ADSB yeah. in and out, JPI 930 engine monitor, which is just awesome, gives you so much information. The Garmin GI 275, which is like 6,000 bucks and has so many different functions. Uh, of it course, it has uh, Garmin's USB <laughs> ports. Yeah, USB chargers everywhere, uh, S Tech 30 autopilot, Storm Scope, that's pretty ancient. I don't even know if that works. A custom fan iPad pad holder <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, uh sun visors uh harnesses kind of everything you'd want and it's all in a very affordable retractable gear ifr package and that's just what's going on on the inside wait till we walk around the exterior where you'll find this what is this why is this on the top of the wing that's kind of odd that would be part of the stole kit see it says it right here horton stole craft so that was probably a small fortune to buy and then install it adds a bunch of surface area to the leading edge of the wing it adds i think as part of the kit these vgs micro vortex generators and then of course this kind of uh wing end cuff you can see it angled slopes down right there so all of this makes for better takeoffs landings what approach speeds can be way yeah, lower the guy we bought it from literally was saying that he practicing stalls cannot stall it um in the forums we were reading that people have gotten this down to 150 stall speeds that's 150 stall speeds obviously this is a lot heavier of an airplane so the fact that 
you're thinking about 150 stall speeds with this thing is crazy. In so this package. We're not going to be testing that today, obviously. It definitely adds to the safety envelope of this plane. So yeah, John, the previous owner, great guy. He's uh, building a Zenith uh, 750 right now and he doesn't really need two planes and he did his IFR training in this one. So he was ready to sell it. This plane is kind of filling a gap for us because right now, believe it or not, with all of our planes, not a single one, at least in this exact moment, is airworthy. And we have a bunch of trips coming up. Now, I say airworthy, I, I mean like paperwork. Some are waiting on paperwork, some are waiting on parts, parachutes. some, yeah, parachutes, and some are waiting on other maintenance items. So. Everything is down, so we figured, you know what, why not buy something that's airworthy, ready to go, and we can take on these trips. So that's what we're doing today, and the first trip is down to South Texas, where we're going to look at that other Cessna 210. So it's gonna be a crazy day. So without further ado, let's get to it. Heck yeah. All right. Okay, you got me? Yep. You? I got you guys. We're set, we're rolling. All right, vlog, we found Christian. Picked him up, he was just grabbing some uh, stuff from Walmart real quick, so without further ado, three minutes into the vlog, we're already about to hit the skies. This is crazy. Okay, we got him double cushioned up. This has a different dash, it's not a 210 dash, um, and so it's about four inches, what, three inches taller than a normal 210 dash. So I actually, sitting on the normal 210 seat, could not see out <laughs> uh, at 510. You know, JR Giants, they can see, but... I could not. I so John included some cushions, so it all works out. Yeah. So he's he's good. I'm good. And we're taxiing over to runway one six today. One six as we head down to South Texas to go look at another two ten. We'll explain in just a second. Let's focus on this takeoff. Okay. I know it looks like we're like packed full of stuff back there. I mean we are, but it's it's lightweight stuff. Little jackets and bags and stuff and then the logs. Complete logs on this plane. Really good documentation. Really good. Probably the best I've ever seen. Previous owners were all super meticulous. Real quick guys, before we take off and hit the skies, I need to hit you with a piece of big news. And that is our friends over at Pilot Institute are holding their biggest sale of the entire year for Black Friday and Thanksgiving. If you didn't know already, Pilot Institute is an incredible online tool that you can use to begin or advance your pilot education and training. And the best thing is they have courses for everyone. So if you know you wanna be a pilot, but maybe you're super young and you haven't done any training or learning yet, you can go for their PPL course. It'll take you from zero to passing your FAA written exam. Or if you're trying to get your instrument rating, great, they have a course for that. If you wanna be a drone pilot, they have that too. So as an actual, user of the course, I can confirm just how good it is and how much money you actually save in the long run. I'm telling you, if I had to learn all of this in like a ground school paying an instructor, it would run thousands of dollars. But here you get it all. Forget this, the Black Friday deal, $199 for any of their top courses. But wait, there's more. So when you buy that course, you actually get a second one for free. So that means if you have a friend or family member who wants to also get into flying, you get to gift them that course, the same course. This deal will not be available in a few days, so do not miss out. Thank you, Pilot Institute, once again for sponsoring this channel. Really, really do appreciate it. Now, without further ado, let's get to that first flight in this new Cessna 210. Here we go. Uh, Temple traffic, Centurion 6661 X-Ray, taking runway 16. This will be a straight out departure to the south temple. Final is clear. Laps at 10 degrees. Yep. Power is set. Everything's in the green. Engine gauges are all yep. in the green. Airspeed is alive. Yep. Fuel flow, good to go. Okay, gear up. Yep, there it goes. All right, can you go lower on the nose? Like, yeah. I think we should go super shallow. Okay, yep, flaps up. Awesome. Yeah, this is a really shallow climb. If you look, like our best angle is 80, best rate 101, we're at 117. Good. We're Perfect. still at 500 feet per minute. Because we're still a little hot, so yeah. can't do any more. No, cow flaps are open. Gray departure, good afternoon. Centurion 6661 X-ray. Centurion 6661 X-ray, gray approach. Yeah, good afternoon. We're five miles to the south, looking to pick up flight following to Tango X-Ray Whiskey for 61 X-Ray. Centurion 61 X-Ray, say altitude and roof. We'll be climbing up to 10,500, 10,500, 61 X-Ray. Centurion 61 X-Ray, Squawk 6240. 
Centurion 6260X-ray. Centurion 6661X-ray, radar contact, uh, about seven to eight miles south of Temple, 2800, altimeter 3001. 3001, 61X-ray. Checking the windy app real quick, see what the winds are doing. Yeah. Yeah, the winds are going to be coming out of that way. Crosswind. Dude, this is insane. Look at those updrafts. Remember we were talking about? Because we're at 120 indicated, still doing 500 feet per minute. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want, I mean, we can decrease our angle if you want to get this down. Yeah, it, that would, that yeah. would help. Once we get into cooler air, we can do a bigger bite at it. Yeah. Jeffrey, is this your first time flying with me? I think so. Your girlfriend flew with me for 11 hours before you did. <laughs> That's right. Kirsten's flown with me a few times. Yeah. So we're direct. So you got this plugged in to 355. Yep. Our route. Yeah. And you also got it hooked up. Well, yeah. obviously, just the line direct to. And we have it on here. We have it on here. We have it on oh, here. Oh, man. Redundancy. Holy smokes. And if we wanted, we could have it on here. And we could have it on there, yeah. Does the autopilot have GPS steering? No, it's just heading and altitude. Okay, guys, looking good. We'll catch you up more maybe at cruising altitude, which we're open for 10.5, so we'll see. We might adjust that depending on what the winds are doing. All right, just made it up to 10,500 feet. Pulling the prop back to 2,300. Wide open throttle, obviously not turbo, so we're only making 19.5 inches. Uh, prop at 2,300. Could go 2,200 if we want it to be really quiet, but 23 is fine. Soon, we're going to get to leaning it, and I want to see how it's going to run Lena Peak, if it'll run Lena Peak. Sometimes the 470s are a little tricky, but uh, with the gammy injectors, I think we'll be okay. And then we'll see how low of a fuel burn we can go. So we're going to go for like 10 or 20 Lena Peaks so that we actually still have some power. We're not trying to go 50 Lena Peak at this altitude because then you're just pissing away all your speed. Here, there's no red box. There's no danger zone. We're under, we're at 56% power. We can go to any uh, mixture setting. We're not going to damage anything. So we're going to go about 10 Lena Peak. Let's do that right now. Okay, so we're looking for the last one to peak. Yep. And then we'll go 10 Lena that. Okay, here they go up, up, up. Oh, that's what's really quick. All right. Go nice and slow. Yeah, very. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Four, yep. Six, 13, 8, descending via the Suzy 6 south. We got Juliet. South is 45, 46, Austin Project. Expect 20 left. No, go very slow. All right, that one just peaked. Okay. Now they're all dropping. Okay. I don't. I can't remember which one was the last one to peak, but they did. I'm sure there's a lean assist that would have yeah. helped. It would have identified, you know, the last one when they peaked. They yeah. kind of like light up. I probably should have turned that on. Truing at 153 uh, miles per hour. Okay, I was gonna say, holy crap! Yeah. With yep. a stole kit. Obviously, a stole kit robs some speed. A heavy. Gross weight, robs some speed. Feels really good. It does. Very stable, very smooth. Runs great, Lena Peak. Did it? Yeah. Not yeah. hesitating at all. Gotta love an, an injected Continental with uh, Gammy injectors. Makes leaning really easy. Gosh, and having a JPI 930. Oh, well, we'll check back with you in a bit. Maybe once the sun sets a little bit. One hour later. Okay, it's a little dark. Uh, forgot to update you guys earlier, but we are only, uh, what, 40 minutes out? probably a little quicker once we start descending, but we are thrilled with how it's performing. I actually leaned it a little bit more because we were at around peak EGT or maybe five lean a peak. And I said, oh, let's put it more to like 20, 30 to see what it does. Still runs super smooth. And we're at 9.6 gallons per hour at like kind of around 130-ish, give or take. Not, I think that's pretty darn good. Yeah, it's an awesome, awesome airplane. We've had literally zero issues. So smooth, so stable. Um, I mean, we have no autopilot in this. It's in op right now, and so we're hand flying it. No hands, haha. -ha, you like? I mean, it, it literally holds uh, everything. I mean, it has rudder trim, it has elevator trim, but yeah, it's been great. So, like I mentioned in the intro, we're going to look at another 210. It's a 64 model. I didn't mention the year, so it's a D model. It has the six seats with the two kitty seats in the back. It also has the bigger IO520, 285 horsepower, naturally aspirated engine. Of course, the panel isn't like this. It's more of a basic panel. It's got like a five th uh, uh, 430 yeah. old school 430 GPS. Yeah. I mean, it's all right, but it's nothing, uh, nothing like this. So we're going to go check it out, but if the price is right, I think we're going to be walking away from this video with two sets, the two tens for the price of our 182. Just to make that clear, the moral of the story, we got an offer we couldn't refuse on our super modded 182. 
And with that money, we will be buying two Cessna 210s and have money left over for fuel and maintenance. So if anyone's wondering why we left Oshkosh early, that's that's why. This is why. And by the way, these aren't like some like 500 hours past TBO motors about to blow up kind of planes. Like, no, these are all low time engines. This motor has 200. You're the one who went through the logbooks. Yes, I did go through the entire logbooks. Speaking of which, airframe, not a single piece of damage history, and uh, the engine's been going strong, just being overhauled ever since. So, 280 hours on the engine. So, I mean, the thing's hardly broken in. So, I think run, runs I, like a top. I think it's because it's a big engine hardly working when you're talking about uh, fuel flows and performance that we're getting out of it. Like comparing this to a base 182 or a small engine in a Cardinal or anything else, like I would much rather have a big engine hardly working that can give you the power when you really need it uh, instead of a small one uh, being turned all the way up. This is a sweet engine, 470s are tried and true. Keep in mind though, the 182s of the same era have an 0470 with 230 horsepower. So this being 260 and you get the benefits of fuel injection, great fuel economy. It's a no-brainer. Plenty of power for this platform. Maybe with six seats, it would be a little underpowered, but as a four-seat 182 RG, it's it's plenty of performance. We got up to 10.5, no problem, right? I mean, just yeah. a nice shallow climb to keep the temps cool just because it was a hot day, but it did all right. Yeah, I mean, we were we were climbing super shallow. I mean, it's a, you know, new-to-us airplane, right? We've never flown it. We wanted to take it slow, see how it performs, and, uh, yeah, keep the temps down. Getting the hang of the uh, JPI engine monitor here. So this button controls like the different settings, whether you want all or temps or fuel. But check this out with fuel. You go through this toggle, boom, we have the used and it matches perfectly with the remaining. So as long as this fuel burn is correct, it's a really good indication of how much we have left. Really happy to see a built-in fuel totalizer. I mean, for like 8,500 bucks plus like 8,000 bucks for labor and other parts, uh, it better be good for 16 grand. But check this out, five hours and 30 minutes of endurance left. And we've already been flying for two hours. I mean, this thing can go nearly eight hours. Uh, that's just crazy. We're not going to push it like that. We're always going to land with plenty because we don't want uh, fuel starvation issues. These early 210s, you got to be careful on final approach. It says right here, you know, be careful of extended slips. We are landing four miles from the Mexico border. Oh boy. Uh, 35 miles inland from uh, the Gulf of Mexico. So it's just north of Mexico, west of the Gulf. Uh, yeah, that's where Chris is. We're meeting Chris there. He just landed. He's the second pilot for the other two tents. We're gonna go two in each plane if this all works out. Uh, but look at this sunset. Holy smokes. This is absolutely beautiful. Okay guys, day two of the vlog. I was going to end this video down in South Texas, but I got to document a crazy phenomenon. We got a 20 knot tailwind headed to Arizona. You got to be kidding me. We never have tailwinds. Like what? <laughs> never. I swear we've probably taken what? Four or five planes west? 18 to 28 knots directly on the tail. So we are just screaming. 150 to 160 knots over the ground. The economy is awesome. This plane is performing amazing. And now I think it's time we address the elephant in the room. Where's the other Cessna 210 we were buying? Well, um, a little update from the back here. Oh yeah. Are you talking about me? Cause I don't have a <laughs> He said, are you talking about me? Cause I don't have a headset. Yeah, we forgot a headset. So Christian's rocking the earplug. So um, anyway, the other 210, all I'm gonna say is stay tuned for probably the craziest video that will ever hit the channel, maybe. Long story short, we did buy that second one. I don't want to really show it yet because it's going to be its own vlog. It's crazy content. Sound good, Jay? We didn't reveal yeah. too much? Uh, we did not, no. It's been a crazy day. Absolutely exhausting. I mean, we did all this coming straight from Oshkosh. It's a crazy week, like man. we said yesterday, I mean, we got this. Jeffrey found this deal coming from Oshkosh on the first one. Found it on the second one. And we did not know, you know, how crazy this was going to be coming down. Uh, but yeah, you guys are going to be extremely entertained. Uh, 
Again, I mean, I'm still trying to process what happened today. It, it, it was ups and downs, ups and downs, but it, we ended up leaving very, very content. And I think you guys will be extremely content too watching uh, what happened today. So stay tuned for that. It'll be a fun video. Heck yeah. Speaking of ups and downs, we were battling some bumps earlier. I was getting really queasy. We were not feeling good. We were about to call quits in El Paso and just fly the rest later. But now, smoothed out, sun setting. We're a little higher, and it's just feeling great. We're recharged. Yeah. Well, what was the last stop? We got to give a shout out to that airport, Dude, that uh, awesome. Pesos, Texas. Absolutely phenomenal. If you Picos, guys are in Picos. South Picos, Picos, yeah. If you guys are in Southwest Texas, go. Um, with you know donation and stuff, they have food, they have ping pong, uh, free ice pops, drinks, uh, drinks. Yeah, it was awesome. And uh, we're about what two hours thirty minutes from Scottsdale now. Uh, may have to do some weather deviations, mountain deviations. Got a little bit of weather over Tucson area, south of Albuquerque, but yeah, we'll figure it out. So uh, this this 210, just to update you guys on this one, uh, is is flown amazing. I mean, we we picked it up yesterday, uh, made it down to the border of Mexico um, and did great. It was about a three hour flight and it, it, it performed well. We've been flying for about three and a half, four hours today. Um, and this one is great. I mean, it's so nice having all these avionics. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera, but it's backlit LED, uh, the steam gauges, which is super, super nice. Um, nice little blue kind of turquoise tint to it. No squawks, really. I mean, we're trying to figure out what we can do to this airplane and we, we don't really know. I mean, uh, have we had come up with any ideas? That's where you guys come in. We need some advice on this one. Again, we bought it because it's flyable, it's airworthy right now, and we have some trips coming up, and Christian and I can probably log about maybe 20 hours in the upcoming weeks with it. So it's gonna get to use right away, and we don't really know what to do after that. Maybe we'll upgrade some things. Maybe we'd mess with the paint a little bit. The interior is pretty nice, so it's not worth ripping out. What do you guys think? Mod suggestions or future plans with the 210? I'm sure some people are gonna say, Oh, those two early 210s, the, the landing gear is garbage. You better sell that thing before, you know, the gear doesn't work and then you got a $20,000 repair bill. Rah, 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 rah. I already know that's coming in the comment section, but this thing's been squawk free uh, for the previous owner for the last three years and it's been really well, well maintained. So I don't know if we'll run into any issues, but all the saddles and all those gear components and hydraulic actuators, all that stuff look really good. So it's not burning any oil, maybe one quart after like 10 hours. So that's really good. Um, I can't complain, but what do you guys think down below? What do you think of the 210 acquisition? I know you didn't see this one coming. So we are 43 miles away from Scotia right now. We're uh, about to start a descent. Uh, we're gonna request uh, a clearance of the Bravo. Chris is gonna grab the radios, a little bit of CRM. Oh yeah, approach good evening. Uh, Cessna 6661 actually, we're at 10 two. Uh, like a VFR descent with the Bravo in the Scottsdale table. Entry in 6661 X-ray Phoenix approach, Phoenix altimeter 2980. Advise you of the automated weather at Scottsdale and cleared through Bravo airspeed. 8-0, we have the weather at Scottsdale, and thank you, cleared to the Bravo 61 X-ray. There we go, easy as that. Scottsdale traffic, helicopter, Ranger 1. Yeah. Nice, dude. So there you guys have it, the Cessna 210 officially made it home to Scottsdale. And uh, let me just say, it nearly didn't make it home. Stay tuned for next video. Disaster nearly struck. It could have been a very, very different outcome. Uh, not clickbait. So uh, before I end this video, I thought, you know what? Oh my goodness, I didn't post this one video, the final video we filmed with the Cessna 182. We never ended up posting this final 182 video because unfortunately plans kind of changed and we couldn't film the second half of the video. So it wasn't quite long enough, which is really unfortunate because it's a really cool formation video with a special guest, Citation Max. So please do not click out, this video is not over. Enjoy the next eight minutes of a never before seen video with the 182, with of course, Citation Max and Fly with Owen and a brand new G6 Cirrus. What's going on guys? Welcome back to JR Aviation and welcome to very busy and loud Scottsdale Airport where today we're going flying. That's right, we have friends with us 
Citation Max flew in in a Cirrus and Owen flew in in a Gulfstream G4 and we have our Cessna here so we're thinking a massive formation play. Yeah, three-way formation play with the Gulfstream, that should be fun. Okay, just kidding, we're obviously not doing formation with the G4, but Owen did fly that in. There are the other two stars. Max, nice to meet you. Finally, after all these months trying to link up. Seven Charlie Kilo flight of two, runway two one, taxi via Alpha. Okay, yeah, uh, seven Charlie Kilo flight of two, runway uh, two one, taxi via Alpha. Thanks. All right, dude. All right. Nice to have the go. AC, right? It's like yeah. cools down real quick. <laughs> Benefit of riding in this plane. Yeah. Chris, Chris got the short end of the stick. <laughs> yeah. We've been Scottsdale many times. Been in Scottsdale. Actually, this is the second time. Only been here one time oh, before. Wow. Okay. I did some multi training out of here in a twin star, which was actually kind of cool. Ah, very nice. Well, thanks for coming back. So, Citation Max, you obviously, Citation in the name, fly some pretty cool planes, a jet. I do. Yeah, so I fly a Citation CJ3 Plus out of uh, New York. It's been awesome. I flew on a CJ3. I don't think it was a Plus okay. one time, yeah. and I really enjoyed that. What's the difference between the Plus and the... So, yeah, so the main difference is really just the cockpit. So, one has the Garmin G3000 avionics, oh. and then the other one has the kind of more traditional, like, uh, ProLine 21. That must be a treat to fly. It's and awesome. it's what, like seven seats, eight seats? Yeah, so it fits eight people. We're taking off together? Yeah. Oh, I'll be so cool. It's going to be a flight of two, and then so I'm going to speed up first. I'm going to kind of make the break out to the right, and then Owen's going to kind of join up. So it's going to be cool. All right, seven Charlie Kilo, flight two, clip takeoff. Uh, right turn to the north is approved. Thanks. Benjamin's in the green, looking good. We got Owen literally right down there behind right us. Right there. And uh, we are climbing up to 7,500 feet on our way to Sedona. Won't take too long to get there. Loving being back in the Sirius of G6. G6? So, I mean, uh, it's <laughs> tough to beat. Come on, G6. With AC blasting at us. So uh, life is good in here. Part two of our little mini interview. How'd you get started in flying? And when did you get your pilot's license? Yeah, so I got my pilot's license when I was 18. Oh, nice I've nice. loved flying since I was literally zero. Ah, sweet. I used to plane spot. So oh. actually, I'm actually from England originally, Oh, so I used to uh, plane spot uh, at Heathrow, Heathrow Airport. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's kind of how I got started, and then. Uh, Did you ever see a Concorde, or were you too, you were too I young? I was too young. Yeah, my mom, it. my mom and dad have flown on Concorde, which I'm incredibly jealous so about. Oh, cool. Because that's like you know an Avgeek's dream, right? Got started and got my people at 18, and I've just been working my butt off and building time. And you started posting some YouTube videos a few years ago, or when did you start? Yeah, so I started a little bit when I. Uh, did the SR-22, started flying that quite a bit, and yeah. then when I got the Vision Jet, I was like, there's no Vision Jet content out there, and I was actually the youngest Vision Jet type-rated pilot at that time ever, which is kind of cool, and I was like, maybe people want to like see this airplane, like, I, I think it's super cool, let's share it, right. and then the, uh, the first video I posted was uh, me taxiing out of Chicago Air. It was like a 45-minute taxi in the rain. Jeez. It had like 2 million views in the first like month. And I'm like, this is awesome. Um, yeah. So then I kind of started doing more videos, and, and then it kind of led into all airplanes, and now I'm here. So but it's, cool. been, it's, been a, it's been an amazing journey. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Same thing with us, starting a YouTube channel. Yeah, we just so posted random videos for, okay. for fun with some cars. Yeah. Uh, not thinking much of it, yeah. right? just like you. And then one took off, like driving my Dodge Viper to high school. It went crazy oh, really? viral overnight. Wow. Yeah, within... Within uh, one day, like we picked up like 32,000 subscribers, like that that wow. viral day, and then yeah. within a week we were like 100, 100, over 100,000 subs. So I'm like, that's amazing. All right, guess I'll keep posting videos. <laughs> yeah. So similar to you, okay? Yeah. So I, but I think that's like in a way the best way that it happens. It's natural. 
right? Yeah. You do it because it's oh, really that's maybe a cool video, and then like you post it, people really enjoy it. And if you enjoy making the content too, then it's a and it's a win-win because if you enjoy it, then they'll enjoy it, and it's just yeah. All right, look at me go, guys. I have <laughs> control of the SR22 Turbo. We are up. I love the car sounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, we got turbo on this yeah, thing. It's true. Nice. Pretty responsive. Yeah. yeah. This feels great. So beautiful. Sedona's dead ahead. We'll be there in no time because we, we got tired of going slow. So we <laughs> left Owen in the dust and we're, uh, yep. we're going about 170 knots. So we're cruising. Beautiful Does weather. Does it feel any different than the Cirrus that you guys own from a flight control point of view? Or? It's just a little more responsive. More responsive, okay. But similar. What's your view on side stick versus yoke? Do you have a preference? I really like this. Yeah, me too, because like, like you, your arm can kind of rest right here. So it has like kind of this nice like resting. Yeah. I, I like it, yeah. And for us tall people with huge yes. knees, yes, exactly. so I love it. I know some people say, oh, the, the feel isn't as like communicative. As yeah. like some, I don't some know. Jokes, it feels good to me. Feels yeah. good to me, but I don't have much experience <laughs> coming from a lot of planes. But you would know. Yeah, I've always liked it, and it just clears it up, makes it so minimalistic in yes. the cabin. So I, I like that. If you want, you can descend to like 6,600. All right, we'll start going down, down there. there. It's not even golden hour. At five, five o'clock. It's ridiculous. It's, I bet. Yeah. So donut traffic. Got a white blue Cirrus worth about uh, 10 miles to the south. Uh, 7,100 descending for a left down in runway 21 Sedona. So that's a wrap. That was the final landing with the Cessna 182. I know a lot of people are probably like, dang it, why'd you get rid of that thing? It went too soon. Why are you replacing it with older airplanes that don't have the same level of modifications and cool factor that the 182 did? That is a fair argument to have, but uh, honestly, we had our fun with the 182. It was a great experience. We got a little bit of content. Sure, we probably should have gotten a lot more content with it since it was a really cool plane, but when the opportunity presents itself to trade into other airplanes that you can then make more money on and make more and more money and experience more and more airplanes, it kind of makes sense to flip our way up. It started with just one or two planes and now look, we have a whole you know, hangar full of planes. So we'll always have that business mentality and if a deal makes sense, we'll go for it. And the deal made sense here to sell the plane. We got a great offer we couldn't refuse and now we're replacing that one plane with, yeah, like I said earlier in the video, three airplanes. So just wait for the next 210 reveal and the third airplane reveal. You guys are gonna lose your minds. It's amazing content. So we've got some of our best content ever coming to the channel over the next few weeks and months. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned. You're gonna wanna subscribe. Over half of our viewers aren't subscribed to the channel. So what are you doing? Literally free to subscribe and hit the bell while you're at it. Thank you guys for watching and be sure to have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family and loved ones. Take care.